So this video is a sort of non-follow-up to Distro Delves episode 2 where we looked at Mint 19.3 and saw that Mint outperformed Ubuntu 18.4 in every single test in Geekbench 5's CPU benchmark. As with any benchmark, the results should be taken with a grain of salt, but this may illustrate some low-key differences that might make Mint faster than Ubuntu. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on the kernel, specifically the CPU mitigations for Spectre, Meltdown, and probably others. Since every distro sets up Grub or the bootloader in general differently, I'll just link the guide I followed to disable the CPU mitigations in the description section below, rather than try to show how I did it. Now, if there's any question as to whether or not Mint has the mitigations enabled, the answer is yes, it absolutely does. I found this super handy script by Speed47 that does a quick check for a bunch of different vulnerability patches and Mint has every single one. Now keep in mind that this test is pretty surface level because my CPU is an AMD A series which isn't affected by a lot of the big vulnerabilities out there from what I understand and as such it shouldn't be as affected by the possible performance regression caused by these patches. Now if you were expecting some sort of big showdown in performance, prepare to be disappointed. I'm not even going to do the side-by-side -side comparisons that I've done in the past because I'm sick right now and the differences were negligible to non-existent and setting those benchmarks up or comparisons or whatever is actually kind of a lot of work and I don't want to do it. So to start with I tested Dirt Rally because it takes full advantage of the GPU and shouldn't be affected by the CPU mitigations and it wasn't really. The benchmark I ran after disabling the mitigation showed a 2 frame rate a second gain, probably well within the standard deviation. Next up we've got CSGO, which I expected to see some sort of performance difference. I increased the graphics quality quite a bit from the defaults, I think it's on high or ultra or something, but the benchmarks pre and post mitigation showed no difference at all, they both returned 37 frames a second. Xenotic made for an excellent test because it uses a older graphics engine which is both single threaded and CPU bound. Interestingly, Xenotic returned lower frame rates after disabling the mitigations, that's right. Now obviously that's not to say that disabling them will decrease performance, but it did have a negative performance impact on the benchmark for some reason. The Geekbench 5 benchmark provided an equally interesting picture into the performance impact of the mitigations. Single core performance remained the same between the two benchmarks, but multi-core performance was actually better with the mitigations enabled. And just for funsies, I ran the same Geekbench test on my local workstation, which is running a trusty FX 8350 from the days when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Now again, this is an AMD processor, but still, it got better scores with the mitigations enabled. Not across the board, but still, these numbers are simply better than with the mitigations disabled. Now, to be honest, this whole CPU mitigation performance impact thing is above my head, and I don't fully understand what the hell's happening here. All I know is that these benchmarks seem to suggest that disabling the mitigation seemed to have a negative impact. So the takeaway from all of this is that if you have an AMD CPU, especially an older CPU, and you're wondering if you'd see performance gains from uh, disabling them, it's not worth the possible performance regressions, and it is certainly not worth the possible security risks. I haven't talked about the security risks, that's not the point of this video, but those mitigations exist for a reason. If you don't know what Spectre and Meltdown are, I suggest that you check them out. Canonical actually wrote a pretty good like write-up comparison, uh, kind of explaining for the everyman what they are and how they affect your system. I recommend checking that out. In fact, I'm going to link it in the description below. So this video ended up being uh, quite a bit shorter than I was expecting it to be because really there wasn't a whole lot to talk about or show because the results of the benchmarks were so like mundane and just kind of weird to be honest. I'm also sick with a cold and feeling pretty low energy so I'm just going to wrap the video up here. If you liked the video be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can follow me on Twitter or Coffee or Patreon. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.